Good afternoon, it's uh, Robert Lovett, uh, delighted to be with you again, and I'm continuing my series on 1 Peter chapter 2. And the title of my talk today is Silencing Ignorant Talk. And you may think, well that sounds arrogant, doesn't it? Who are we as Christians to silence anyone, you might ask? Shouldn't we be the ones to listen? And of course, listening is such an important part of the Christian life. But let me read the verse to you. 1 Peter 2 verse 15, it says this, For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. And there are others who might say, well yes, ignorant talk, it needs to be silenced, but simply by doing good, uh, that'll never be enough. We need much tougher weaponry than that. But what is ignorant talk? Normally, when we think about ignorant talk, uh, we think of someone uh, speaking without knowledge or understanding. If I were to talk about cosmetics, well, that certainly would be ignorant talk. I don't know anything about cosmetics. But this passage is referring to something else. From a Christian perspective, ignorant talk is that which does not have Jesus Christ as its starting point or is not entirely consistent with the teaching of Jesus Christ. God's wisdom is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Ignorant talk, well, it comes from a place of darkness, not the light of Christ. It's ignorant of the truth of Jesus. And it's not restricted to people of little learning. University professors, TV experts, journalists, Politicians are all guilty of ignorant talk. Let me give you a few examples. It might be a divorced parent who, when talking to their child, besmirches the name of the other parent. Or it may be the chair of a residence association who, when he's conducting the residence association meeting, is really acting very selfishly and in his own interests, being devious. Or it may be a teenage magazine which is giving advice on contraceptives to teenagers and it's inappropriate. Or a politician who advises that all religions are the same. The only thing that matters is sincerity. So we come across ignorant talk everywhere. Now at the start of this verse, there's a rather surprising reference to God's will. And undergirding all human history is the fact that God has a purpose. There are some things he wants us all to do, such as the Ten Commandments. He doesn't, for example, say, attempt four of them. And there are some things he wants just you to do. So, in various parts of the Bible, it says some are called to be teachers. Others are called to be administrators. Some he wants to be conspicuous. Others are going to be inconspicuous. But all matter. Everyone matters. And the weapon that we fight with is, according to this verse, doing God. Good. Let me read the verse again. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. We are to be the living embodiment of the alternative to foolish and ignorant talk. Our lives are to be our sermon. We can all give an account of the faith that we hold in words, but also in the actions of our lives. So we can be involved in ministries of mercy, such as a night shelter for homeless people, or street pastors, or beachy head chaplaincy. Some will be particularly gifted with words and can put the case against ignorant talk with grace, conviction, and authority. There are many shining examples of that. And Jesus himself was the supreme example. Do you remember the story of when a woman was caught in the very act of adultery and they wanted to stone this woman? What Jesus said? He said, look, uh, the one of you who's without sin be the first one to throw a stone at her. Or the people that came up to Jesus trying to trap him and said, should we pay taxes to Caesar? And he takes the coin and he says, whose head on it? And they say, Caesar's. And he wisely says, well, look, render to Caesar's that which is Caesar's, and to God that which is God's. You see, Jesus' life was the embodiment of wisdom. 
in this passage, we're called to be model citizens, which is why if you look at one or two of the surrounding verses, it tells us to respect authority and be obedient to authority, even to the extent of uh, telling slaves to be obedient to their masters. They want the Christian community to be a shining example of the love of Christ. In our lives, we're to bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. And sometimes the silencing of foolish talk doesn't happen straight away or overnight, but we show a better way. We show uh, an example in our lives of a different way of doing things and a different way of saying things. That in the end, God may be glorified and foolish talk shown for what it is. Thank you for listening.